Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So I thought of making videos for the upcoming CSR net exam, which is CSR June 2024 exam and uh, like how you can prepare for that and the stuff related to that. Uh, but then I thought that it is equally important to discuss about the previous exam, which is CSR December 2023 and have a detailed analysis of that. Now, there are various reasons why I'm making this video because the last exam was a little different. Uh, it was a little unexpected and that's why it becomes important to understand that okay so whosoever if you are preparing for the next csn exam and if you are planning to uh, you know to start your preparation now so it is very important for you to understand what was asked in the previous exam what was the weightage of the topics which topic was asked of higher marks which topic was asked for a lower marks which topic was not asked which topic was asked more frequently which part contains more question uh, I mean, uh, more questions from a particular topic and so on. So this is going to be a detailed analysis of CSR December 2023 exam. And it is super, super important for the preparation of next exam. I know like you all are preparing for it, right? So let's dig into it. Let's try to understand it. And let's try to um, like get into the details of CSIR December 2023 exam. And let's understand that how... Uh, the exam was different from the others okay so i'll be starting it from the number of questions and the total marks okay so you should be aware about it that uh, you have total 120 questions in the exam okay so you have total 120 questions now out of these 120 questions you have 20 general aptitude questions okay so these are the questions are from the general english general aptitude and you have 100 questions from chemistry so we are going to talk about these 100 questions, okay? We are not talking about these 20 general aptitude questions here. So out of these 100 questions of chemistry, there were 32 questions asked from inorganic chemistry. There were 33 questions asked from physical chemistry and there were 35 questions asked from organic chemistry. Now this all makes, uh, if you add them, this becomes 100. So you can see that organic chemistry was asked uh, for more number of questions, slightly more number of questions compared to inorganic and physical chemistry. But overall, if you see, there is no huge difference. So what we can understand, the first point which we can take from here is that all the three topics, organic, inorganic and physical, all of them have similar weightage. They are not entirely like there is no uh, like huge difference between the mark, uh, between the weightage of the three sections. Okay. And that gives you the first point that you have to equally give importance to all the three. You cannot just rely on any two of them or any one of them because all three are asked for equal marks. So that's what it is. So as per uh, the number of questions, you can see the marks distribution as well. So inorganic chemistry was asked for 100 marks. Physical chemistry was asked for 108 marks. And inorganic chemistry was asked for 112 marks. So if you will see the overall question paper is of 360 marks. Okay. Uh, of course, you have options over there. You have uh, you, you don't have to write down every answer or you don't have to choose every answer. You only have to solve question of 200 marks. Okay, this is what you have to choose. But the question paper consists of 360 marks. That's why you are seeing this much, uh, these many marks. Okay, so don't get confused that how these many marks are asked. That's because the overall question paper is of 360 marks. Okay, I hope you got the point. So looking upon here, it looks like organic chemistry is the one which has high weightage, 112 which is 12 marks more than in organic chemistry and then 108 marks. And this trend is very uh, evident from the previous two, three papers. Okay, If you will look upon the previous few exams, you will see that inorganic chemistry is the one which is given slightly less weightage. Like it's not huge difference, but it's still like 10 marks or 12 marks difference than the others. Sometimes physical chemistry is asked for higher marks. Sometimes organic chemistry is asked for higher marks. But they all in all they are always like inorganic chemistry is like it's always lesser than both of them so what does that mean it means that inorganic chemistry is something which every year it is asked of around similar weightage and you have to choose either physical chemistry or organic chemistry in detail along with inorganic chemistry to qualify this exam you cannot just simply rely on inorganic chemistry solely and give the exam okay this is what you can look upon from here Okay, coming to the thing. So this is the percentage distribution as the marks which I have just shown you. So the highest percentage distribution is for organic chemistry, which is of 35%. So this is just converted into percentage. Okay, 
So 35% of questions are from organic chemistry, 34% from inorganic, oh, sorry, from physical chemistry, and from inorganic chemistry, only 31% questions are asked. Okay, let's look upon the chapters of inorganic chemistry. Okay, so for inorganic chemistry, which chapter had how much questions and how much, uh, like how much marks basically they had. So starting from organometallic compounds, so these are like marks. Okay, these are like marks. Like how many marks they were asked in section B and section C, I means part B and part C of the exam. So for organometallic compounds, you were asked for six marks in section B and you were asked for 24 marks in section C. So overall, it is of 30 marks. Okay, this this topic was of 30 marks. Chemical bonding was asked for four, four marks. That means it was asked for eight marks. Coordination chemistry, very uh, like uh, surprisingly, it was only asked for eight and six. That is around uh, 14 marks. Then your main group elements was asked for 12 marks. Then you can see F block elements. This time it was asked for a little higher weightage. Uh, it was asked for eight marks. Nuclear chemistry was asked for four marks, just one question from section C. Then bio and organic chemistry was asked for six marks. Inorganic spectroscopy was asked for 10 marks and analytical chemistry, which I have included in inorganic only. So it was asked for four marks. So if you see upon here, you yourself can see that which are the star topics, which are the topics from inorganic chemistry, which have high weightage. So you have inorganic chemistry, uh, sorry, organometallic compounds. This is one of the star topic, which has highest weightage. Then your coordination chemistry, this is again a star topic. Main group elements, this is again a star. Star topic means the topic which has high weightage. And then you have inorganic spectroscopy. So you cannot miss out these topics. These topics are the one from where you are always going to expect questions of higher marks. Okay, they are always having high weightages. So if you are preparing in organic chemistry, you should have very, very good command over these topics, at least over these topics. After these, so I can just make double star on these. So these are like super important topics. After this, after that, there are certain topics which are of less importance, but they are questions are asked from there like chemical bonding. Every year we'll see a question from there. F block element, you will every year see a question. By inorganic chemistry, will every year see a question. So these three again are important topics, but you should cover them after covering these double star topics. Okay. So this is how the percentage or this is how the marks is just shown just to make you understand that the highest weightage was for organometallic compounds, then coordination chemistry, uh, main group elements and inorganic spectroscopy. So these are your star topics. Okay. Coming to the next, which is physical chemistry. Okay. So physical chemistry, if you see, so here, the first topic is quantum chemistry from here. If you see section B, six marks, section C, 16 marks, it gives you around 22 marks. Chemical kinetics, two marks from section B, section C, eight marks, overall 10 marks. Surface chemistry, six marks in total. Electrochemistry, 10 marks in total. Solid state, again, six marks. Molecular spectroscopy, 12 plus 4, 16 marks. Then comes your polymer chemistry, six marks. Uh, data analysis, four marks. Thermodynamics, you have 10 marks. Then you have statistical thermodynamics, four marks, and group theory was asked for 14 marks. So if you, again, you want to see the star topics here, so quantum chemistry, uh, then you have chemical kinetics, then you have molecular spectroscopy, okay, uh, electrochemistry as well, then comes your thermodynamics, okay, and your group theory. Okay, so these are your star topics. Like these are the topics which you should not miss if you are preparing physical chemistry. Now I understand, I totally understand that quantum chemistry is not that easy, and there is a huge number of students who have problem in like you know solving questions of quantum chemistry. But uh, try to at least do those questions which are easy to approach. Like there is a part of quantum chemistry that can be studied, and that that does not require much of mathematics. Okay, you can solve those questions, you can understand those questions, and you can answer them. So at least try to do that. Okay, yeah. So these are the topics from physical chemistry. These are, are the topics of most important. You should look upon them. And of course, like uh, solid state chemistry, this is the easy topic. So you can look upon that as well. Uh, then surface chemistry, is, it's again an easy topic. So look upon them after covering these double star topics. All right. So physical chemistry is over here. Now, okay, in the another form I have just shown you. So the star topics, uh, as you can see, with the high bars over here. So these are your star topics. Okay. 
cover these in detail whenever you are preparing for the upcoming exam talking about the next which is organic chemistry okay now if you look upon organic chemistry goc was asked and you will see one thing again over here that goc which contains aromaticity and stereochemistry and relative stuff you will not get many questions from this topic in section c okay so this was asked only for eight marks then reaction intermediates and reaction mechanism if you combine both these so this was a very high weightage topic uh, it is somewhere around 32 marks uh, then reagents and name reaction this was asked for somewhere around 42 marks and then your organic spectroscopy that was asked for 12 marks pericyclic reactions was asked for 8 marks heterocyclic compounds was asked for 4 marks and natural products was asked for 6 marks it's very clear which is the star topic here so these topic are the one if you are preparing organic chemistry like if you are considering organic chemistry as one of your major topic for the exam then you should not miss out these two topics okay even organic spectroscopy as well so that that is what we call it as star topic okay but if you are someone who is studying inorganic and physical chemistry and uh, you want to cover some topics of organic chemistry in that case you if, if you if you find easy to cover these three topics it's good but if you don't find them easier or if they look difficult then you can look upon the other topics okay these are is comparatively easier uh, compared to these three i mean you don't have to dig into that much of detail of organic chemistry and you can still solve questions from pericyclic reactions goc even organic spectroscopy is one which you can look upon okay all right so as you can see the star topics are the one which has the highest bars so reaction in uh, intermediates and reaction mechanism reagents and name reaction and organic spectroscopy so this was all about this particular video the idea was to provide you data to provide you information that which topics are of high weightage and which topics you should not miss and you should have a clear idea about how the question paper of CSIR December 2023 was uh, divided among the topics now we have also launched our own ebook which is topic wise previous years questions solved in detail now that ebook contains question papers from CSIR June 2011 to CSIR December 2023 all the question papers the questions are segregated topic wise so you will have uh, the questions in the form of topic wise and the solutions of them as well in detail so if you want to purchase that you can do that from our store the link to that store will be there in the description of this video I'll also I'll try to pin that up in the comment section so that you can go over there and make a purchase of your own and uh, those are ebook those are PDF files once you purchase you can download it you can take a print if you want and or if you want to study from your mobile you can do that itself you can even read it on your laptop anywhere on any of the digital devices and that's all from my side for this particular video i will see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care